How do you make a minute sketch to learn size and scale? We'll use the bacterial ruler, or the E. coli ruler, the best way I know to learn size and scale. We'll start with a handout that I use. The handout is already quite close to the kinds of sketches you would use to practice. What I'll show you are ways to make the sketches equally good, but even a little bit simpler. The bacterial ruler starts with a hair and, in powers of 10, drops down in size all the way to a carbon-carbon bond. We start with a human hair, and a human hair is about 100 microns. microns. The human hair is made of cells, dead cells, each about one-tenth of the diameter of the hair, or 10 microns. The next piece is a cell, and a typical cell is 10 to 20 microns, so here's 10 microns, and a nucleus is about 5 microns. If we put an E. coli next to it, that E. coli would be about 2 microns long and about 1 micron wide. Here are a couple of the flagelli on an E. coli. The next part of our bacterial ruler is the bacterium. An E. coli has multiple flagella, but you don't need them for the bacterial ruler, so I'm leaving off those flagella. Here's one micron, the length about two microns. If we looked at a virus that was trying to infect the cell, that virus would be about one-tenth the size of the diameter. That virus is the next power of 10 stage on our bacterial ruler. I've drawn the virus in a way it actually looks with multiple feet, and the DNA would be inside the capsid made out of bricks. The bricks are proteins. Our scale bar here is about 100 nanometers nm. 100 nanometers, one-tenth of a micron, or 0.1 micron. As a virus that attacks bacteria, it's also called phage. Now you can draw the phage as a diamond, have a single arm going down, and put a couple of capsid proteins on it. The next part of our bacterial ruler will be a tenth that size proteins. So a typical protein is a strand of amino acids, but I'm just drawing it as an irregular shape. This is a capsid protein, but it's the size of a typical protein. A typical protein is about five to 10 nanometers or nanometers. For 10 nanometers, there's a second biological structure that's really useful to remember because it's something you see in photographs of cells all the time. That's the bilipid membrane. Remember that the bilipid membrane has a charged head, a phospholipid or sphingolipid, some kind of charged head, interacts really well with water and the fatty acid tails in the middle. For the bacterial ruler, you don't need to remember the names. I've drawn four pairs, but to remember it, two or three might be enough. A handy thing to remember is that a typical plasma membrane is about seven to eight nanometers. Our 10 nanometer scale would be a little bit longer than the plasma membrane. Many proteins are transmembrane proteins. Those proteins fit inside gaps within the bilipid membrane. So the pieces you could draw would be the typical protein with some shape. You wouldn't bother with the amino acids. For the plasma membrane, instead of drawing more things than you need, these two pairs might be enough to remind you of a plasma membrane. Next on our scale is something that proteins bind to, which is DNA, a double strand of DNA with A's and T's, C's and G's, and a sugar phosphate backbone. Transcription factors are proteins that happen to fit and bind to DNA. The distance from one side to the other of a strand of DNA is about one nanometer. Within the DNA, sugars have carbon-carbon bonds. The final part of our bacterial ruler would be two of the carbon-carbon bonds in a sugar. That distance is about one-tenth of one nanometer. It's about 0.1 nanometer. It's also 100 picometers, the next scale down, 100 picometers. 
and it's also one angstrom, a unit of size that chemists often use. Carbon-carbon bond is actually closer to 0 0.15 nanometer or 150 picometers.